So you're working on your 870 and you're testing feeding with the trigger plate assembly out of the gun. Everything looks good, so you go to put the gun back together only to discover that you can't insert the front trigger plate pin because there's something blocking the hole. What's likely happened is that the force of the shell cycling inside the magazine has pushed the shell latch backward so that the hole in the latch is no longer aligned with the hole in the receiver. Since it is subjected to the most force, the right shell latch is usually the one that is displaced first, but it can happen to the left one as well. When the gun is fully assembled, the front trigger plate pin passes through these holes to hold the latches in place. The latches are staked into the receiver, but without this pin, the staking alone is not strong enough to hold the latches in place, especially during repeated cycling. Displaced shell latches can also occur if you've installed some accessory that replaces a 3 16th inch trigger plate pin with something with a smaller diameter. Later, if you remove the accessory and try to replace the original factory pin, it won't fit because the undersized part has allowed the latches to shift backwards slightly. Now, I know somebody's going to watch this and jump to the incorrect or biased conclusion that shoddy construction on Remington's part is the reason that the staking isn't holding the shell latches in place. To be clear, the staking is not meant to hold the latches in place while the gun cycle shells. As stated previously, that's the role of the front trigger plate pin. The staking is only there to simplify takedown and reassembly by keeping the latches from falling out of place when the trigger plate assembly is removed. You can't fault a design for having issues when you try to operate it without a critical part. Here's an automotive analogy. When you push a radiator hose onto its fitting, it'll stay there on its own. But if you start the engine and try to put pressure through that line without first clamping it, you'll have a mess on your hands. No one's putting down this system for not being able to perform without the clamp because it's clearly not designed to work that way. Now at that point hopefully established, let's progress to the making it right. The first step, of course, is to make sure both the gun's magazine and chamber are empty, if they're still installed on the gun. There are only a few items you have to have to realign a shell latch. Your front trigger plate pin, and something suitable for levering the latch back into place. Now, the latter item doesn't have to be an expensive gunsmith tool. You can get by with the shaft of a small screwdriver, a punch, even a nail. Pretty much anything that's narrow enough to fit through the partially blocked hole, strong enough that it won't bend or break, and long enough to give you sufficient leverage will work. That said, something with a round cross section that's as large as possible while still being able to fit in the hole would work best for this method, and a pointed or tapered tip is also helpful. Items that are unnecessarily thin or that have sharp or angular corners are more likely to damage the edge of the pinhole. I'll be using the same scratch hole that I used to push out the trigger plate pins on my gun. I bought this at a local hardware store a while back for about six bucks. You can find similar tools for even less online. Not only does it work just as well as a more expensive gunsmith pin pusher tool, but the long tapered end and round cross section also makes it well suited for realigning shell latches. Though not required, a flashlight and or magnifying glass can make it easier to inspect the alignment if you're working in a poorly lit area or if you have less than perfect eyesight. Also, a small piece of leather or some other material can be used to help protect the metal if you're worried about marring a nice finish. Now the procedure is pretty simple. Insert your tool through the receiver and latch, then using it as a lever with the outside rim of the receiver hole as a fulcrum, apply rearward force until you feel the shell latch shift forward. Don't try to shove the latch all the way forward at once. Just work it forward in small increments using as little force as possible and checking frequently to see if the trigger plate pin will fit. Once you can get the pin through, insert it halfway and use it to perform the final adjustment. Once the receiver and latch holes are properly aligned, the pin will be perpendicular to the side of the receiver and will slip through with little to no resistance. Even if you don't use excessive force or an improper tool, you'll want to be careful to avoid damaging the hole in your receiver when using this method. If you're careless and end up having to realign your shell latches multiple times, Expect some wear and tear to accumulate.
I've intentionally displaced and reset the right shell latch on my 870 at least a dozen times while making this video, and you can see the resultant wear on the edge of the hole. This won't affect the gun's function, but it is a little unsightly. It should go without saying that the best thing to do is to prevent shell latch displacement in the first place. So how can you prevent displacement? Well, the most effective step is a simple one. Don't unnecessarily cycle things through your gun without the trigger plate assembly in place. Again, this isn't a disparagement to the 870's design or construction. The gun simply isn't intended to be operated this way. If you do have a reason to do this, at least put the front trigger plate pin or some other 3 16 inch pin or rod through the receiver and latches to keep things in place. Also, if you're installing an accessory that replaces a front trigger plate pin, check to make sure the new part is the proper diameter. If it's undersized, either find a suitable replacement or avoid that accessory altogether. Well, I think that about covers it. If you have questions about what I've gone over here, please ask in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out the others in the series and let me know if there's another topic you'd like to see me cover in the future. The subject of this video was inspired by a comment from a viewer looking for help with this problem, so viewer requests and suggestions are appreciated and considered. Please stay safe and support yourself and your fellow gun enthusiasts by being a positive representation of the community. This video was a bit of an experiment. I gave myself a maximum of 24 hours to do all the writing, planning, shooting, editing, posting, everything involved from going from initial concept to what you're watching now. Like speed painting for artists, the goal was to quickly and efficiently produce a complete video on a relatively simple subject without wasting a lot of time on relatively minor details. Personally, I think the approach worked pretty well, and I plan to use it in the future to deliver simpler videos like this one more frequently without letting them become as much of a distraction from longer, more involved videos or other projects. I'd love to know what you all think of the result. A little less polished, but more content. And as always, I welcome your suggestions for topics.